Hey guys, it's been a long time since I've made a YouTube video. I've been working on um, a short film and other stuff. Uh, but I wanted to, in this video, I want to talk about the Bullex H16. I believe this is a non reflex um, movie camera. And of course, the film format that it, shoot, that it shoots on is 16 millimeter film. This actually may be a longer video just because I'll be talking about every single uh, feature and function of the camera and also I'm going to include a part in this video on, on how to load the camera and how to use all of the different uh, features and functions. Alright, so first of all, this camera does not run on batteries at all. Uh, it's not like a camcorder that you use these days where it runs on batteries and you charge it whenever it runs out. Uh, this is actually a wind-up camera. It uses this uh, crank or wind-up system. Uh, this is actually stored at the bottom of the camera. You just pop this off. Now it has this little slit in, in, the, um, in the crank. And it engages, the slit engages in this little knob right here. You see it fits perfectly. And when it engages, you want to uh, rotate this in a counterclockwise direction. Now this, this camera is actually fully wound up right now. So when you're done fully winding it up, you just store that arm, or um, the wind-up crank, whatever you call it, uh, at the bottom of the camera right here. Also, at, at the bottom of the camera, uh, you will need an adapter for um, for most tripods or monopods that you want to use these days. I believe uh, you will want to use an adapter for those kind of um, tripods and monopods. And this camera also, when I got it on eBay, uh, it came with this little handle and um, you will want the adapter for the handle as well if you want to just hold it and just use it as like a point and shoot camera. Alright, so that's it for the bottom the bottom of the camera. For, I'm going to be um, talking about all of the features on the, the side of the camera here. Um, it looks a little bit complicated but I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about every one of them. Right here the top left hand corner of the side uh, you'll see there's this little lever that you can actually move up and down uh, this is actually for engaging slash disengaging the motor so if you move this lever down it disengages the motor and when you move it up it, um, it re-engages the motor and when you move it down you'll feel a little bit of resistance here uh, but when you move it back up, it just it just flicks right up. Um, as far as I know, uh, there's only one reason why you would want to why you would want to disengage the motor, which I won't talk about now, but I'll talk about later in the video when I'm talking about unloading the camera. Um, right here, there's a little button or um, switch or whatever you want to call it. Um, when it's on stop, when the motor's engaged, uh, the camera won't be doing anything. When you move it to M, uh, the camera will always be recording as long as it's in that position and when the camera's fully wound up and the motor's engaged. When you move the button to P, it will just take a still frame. It's not going to record a whole series of frames or anything like that. It's just going to take one frame. Now one thing about taking uh, the still frame is if you have the camera set to T, uh, I'm honestly not sure what I stands for, but T stands for timed. I believe it's for um, timed exposure. Uh, when you have it set to T, as long as you're holding this uh, button on the P, um, the shutter is going to remain open. You can see the shutter right there. Um, I'm holding it on P and the shutter is staying open. Um, so I would actually recommend you set it to I unless you really care about the timed exposure because um, I don't fully 
I haven't fully learned how to do timed exposure yet, nor do I think I ever will need to use it. So I, I just set it to I. So when it's set to I, um, it doesn't matter if I'm holding this button on P, uh, the shutter just opens at a fraction of a second and closes right away. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know about I and T um, for now. Uh, this is the frame rate. Uh, this this dial right here that you turn controls the frame rate, and uh, the frame rate is is actually pretty important um, because, as you know, film is pretty expensive, and I like to shoot at a frame rate of no more than 24 frames per second. Um, actually, um, the, sh the short film I just shot, I shot at 16 frames per second. And when you shoot at lower frame rates like this, the footage tends to look more jerky. And it can go as low of a frame rate as 8 frames per second. So if you shoot at 8 frames per second, you've got a lot of time to shoot your footage. But it can go uh, as high of a frame rate as 64 frames per second. Now that does use up footage really quickly and the only reason why I would um, say that you would use uh, this frame rate is when you're doing like slow motion stuff or anything like that. So when it plays back, um, when you, um, like the more frames you have in a second, uh, the smoother the footage looks when you slow the footage down. Alright, so right above here there's a little um uh you should receive this little crank um with this camera this this crank i've noticed actually tends to fall out pretty easily um so you want to just be careful um and try and not lose the crank because just like i mentioned it does fall out pretty easily uh this crank as far as i know only serves one purpose as well as um, disengaging the motor and I will um, go over this during uh, the unloading process, the, uh, the unloading the film process for this video. Alright and there's one more feature of this camera which I really I really don't know why you would even uh, use this but this basically um, controls, uh, I think, the footage counter. Uh, you would basically move this when you want to keep track of how much film you have shot. There's a little window right here that shows you how much film you've actually shot. The next thing is the viewfinder. Now, I know, um, I understand that non-reflex cameras have this type of viewfinder, but basically, uh, the viewfinder actually ends up, um, uh, right here. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this later. But you can look through the viewfinder to basically adjust uh, your lens. If you get a lens with the camera, I actually have a few right here. Um, that one and also uh, this zoom lens. You can get these separately on eBay. And I believe um, you can get any one of the, the lenses that have the same exact mount, um, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, if I am mistaken, you can of course let me know. Uh, that would that would help me out, and and let me know more things about this camera. Uh, right here, this dial adjusts the focus. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you can um, be looking at how in focus it is, and then adjust it until it's until it's perfectly in focus with your eye. Now there actually there's actually another viewfinder right here. Uh, this is a separate one when you're filming because uh, I'm going to explain later uh, with this camera. You can't actually use this viewfinder when you're filming uh, because uh, you won't be you won't be using the lens that you want to shoot onto the film when you're using the viewfinder. Um, so actually right now let me talk about this turret and an accident I broke uh, the handle which should be right here which lets you turn uh, this turret rotate that 
Um, this is actually a nice thing about the camera is you can have three different lenses uh, screwed into the camera but you can choose which one you want to use at the moment when you're filming which is really nice. This mount right here uh, if there was a lens screwed into that mount that would be the lens you would use when looking through the viewfinder. When you're shooting on to uh, the film as you can see, if I um, let me set this camera to T to show you uh, the shutter opening, the film would actually be right here. So, if you're looking through this viewfinder, uh, you can't be looking through the same lens that would be in front of uh, the film, which is a little bit unfortunate and a little bit tedious when you're filming. So. Basically, what I do when filming is first I, I make the adjustments with the lens I want to use right in front of the viewfinder. Once I'm done making those adjustments, I rotate the turret and have that lens be right here in front of uh, where the film is. And then I switch from using this viewfinder to this viewfinder. Um, this viewfinder has a slightly different perspective than uh, uh, this one, but if you're shooting like a wide shot or uh, a master shot or anything like that, you won't really notice much of a difference. It's only like the extreme close-ups when you're filming that you'll notice that the perspectives are slightly off. And they've they got these knobs and dials here to, um, to mess with to adjust the focus and everything. Uh, the style actually uh, moves, it changes the perspective of the viewfinder. Actually, you can actually move this side of the viewfinder away from the camera to get a slightly different perspective. And you can actually take this viewfinder off. This is detachable. You would just, um, you would actually move this uh, lever down here, out um, to here, and you would just take it off. It's got a little uh, place right here which it can uh, attach onto. Alright, so I've pretty much gone over everything except the inside of the camera. Um, there's a little um, thing that you pull up right here and you can actually rotate this counterclockwise to open up the door to the camera. You can actually see inside there I've got two spools. These two spools already came with the camera. You may only have one or even zero. If you have zero spools in the camera, you actually may want to purchase a blank one or empty one as um, the receiving spool or the take up spool when you're filming. Because you're going to get a spool that contains your film on it, and you're also going to get a spool that basically is empty and blank. And that's the spool that you would want to in, to insert the end of the film into when you're shooting. Alright, so with, uh, with the door to the camera off, you can actually, you'll notice that when you look through this film counter window, it will reset back to A. Uh, this is what it should look like when you haven't shot anything or haven't recorded uh, with your film. So when you first um, load the film into the camera it should start out at A and when you're um, shooting you want to start shooting when it gets to zero. When, when, when you start shooting at A it's likely that your film at that point will be ruined because uh, unless you've shot unless you've loaded your camera in a dark room um, the the very end of your film might be accidentally exposed so that's why there is a safety precaution here um, so that you start shooting not when it's at A but when it gets to zero so that part of the film uh, that part of the film should not be exposed and it should be safe enough for filming one thing I actually forgot to mention in this video 
is that the only inconvenient thing about using this camera is that it is heavy. And I think I think that's I think that's the case for all or most uh, 16 millimeter movie cameras. Uh, other than that, I can't imagine asking for any other 16 millimeter movie camera. Uh, I, I just love it. It's great. Alright, and the last thing I want to go over with this camera is the whole process of loading and unloading the camera. And I believe with, with this entire process, I highly recommend that you get a, a lot of practice with it before you actually go and shoot something. Because there are a lot of steps with this entire process. So, um, before you load the camera, I highly recommend that you take some time and clean, clean out the inside of the camera and get all dust and debris out. There's actually a pressure plate right here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, this pressure plate, um, when you want to clean out the inside of the camera, this is, a, this is an important part of the camera that you want to clean out. Uh, because the film is actually right here near the pressure plate. So what you want to do is just um, pull up the, on this pin and move the pressure plate to the right here. Now you can do that and clean out the inside of the camera with some compressed air. You can even go and unscrew the pressure plate. There's a little screw right here. You can um, unscrew that and, and actually take out the entire pressure plate. Alright, so uh, once you're done with that, you want to screw the pressure plate back in and then push this pin back on the left here. And, uh, and once you've got that done, you're basically all set to load the camera in. So when you're loading the film in, uh, you want to close these loop formers right here. Uh, these loop formers um, are these little um, silver looking um, loops on either end. Basically when you load the film in, you, you want these loop formers to create a loop with the film. Uh, when these are open, it could end up, uh, the film could end up going outside the loop formers and you don't want that happening. So make sure they're closed uh, so that uh, the film can go through right here. Next, what you want to do is you want to, um, when you get the film, you want to make sure uh, that the film, this is actually a practice film, you want to make sure that the film hangs down on the right side because that's the way you want the film to be loaded into the camera. So just make sure it hangs like that. And you want to pop this spool in, into place right here. Of course, this whole process of... Uh, I would highly recommend you load the film in subdued light or complete darkness because light does cause the film to become exposed. And you don't want that happening uh, with the part of the film you actually want to shoot on. So what you want to do is just get the end of the film once you've popped it, the spool into place and you actually want to trim off the end of the film because uh, there's going to be some adhesive um, at the end of the film. So let me just zoom in right here. Uh, there's a little mechanism in the camera there. I'm not sure if you can see it but um, you basically want to trim off the end of the film like this. You want to insert the film right here and then push this down and that will trim off a little bit of the film. See here's uh, the very end of the film that ended up getting trimmed off and as you can see it trimmed it off at, at an angle. This is what you want. You want to trim it off trim off the film at this angle. Alright, so once you've done that you want to uh, roll the film back up mostly, not completely. You want to just have a little bit of film free. So let me actually um, 
take the spool out real quick so I can uh, show you uh, the end of your film you want a little bit of film like that so you can actually insert uh, into the mechanism of the camera uh, at first when I was loading the camera I wasn't exactly inserting the film in the right place I'm gonna zoom in so I could show you um, closely uh, where you want to insert the film. See, I've got the end of the film right here. What I was doing is I was inserting the film right above this metal piece here. Uh, you don't want to do that because I actually tried doing that and I bent the film this way up and then down again and the film was getting stuck and caught in the system or whatever. Uh, you don't want to you, you don't want to put the film above this metal piece. You want to slide it in in between these two metal pieces right here. So it should slide in very smoothly. Uh, you want to just insert it until you eventually reach uh, a point where it just uh, won't go any further. Alright, so at this point, once you've inserted the film into that little spot in the camera, you want to start recording so of course you want to make sure that the camera is fully wound up otherwise it won't record so just hold the film in place for a brief second right before you hit the record button and then release uh, your hand that's holding the film once um, the film actually goes through the whole mechanism so just let it record like that once you've recorded, um, or I, sorry, not recorded, but loaded uh, the film into this little mechanism, you should get a little bit of film that's actually showing up on the other end. Once you've got about this much, maybe actually uh, a little bit more uh, film, you want to, right away you want to open up the loop formers because the loop has already been formed uh, with the film and you don't want these loop formers scratching your film that could be an issue um, that could actually cause your film to get ruined uh, if these loop formers are closed when you're filming next what you want to do with this film with the end of the film is you want to uh, insert the end of the film into uh, a slit um, which is right here uh, you can actually, if you're inserting, if you're loading the film in a dark room, you, you can feel it right here, that there's a little slit. Um, what I've actually, I watched a video, someone recommended to bend the f end of the film into kind of like a claw shape, and I've actually found that to be a lot more um, convenient when loading the film. So, I I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, the way that I I've, I've done it is you want to just bend the end of the film like that so from the side it looks like that and you want to build you want to add another bend just to give it more of a claw shape so it ends up looking like that once you've created this claw shape then you want to just insert the end, the claw, into the slit of the receiving spool, also known as the take-up spool. And especially when in a dark room, I found this part very hard to do. It, it, it took me a few times while in the dark room to get the end of the film or the claw um, into the receiving spool. Once you've got the end of the film in the slit, you want to just roll up the film and then pop the, the take-up spool into place right there. Just make sure it records. Record a little bit. And then, once you've done that, you're pretty much all set to go. Uh, you want to... Um, uh, you want to close uh, your camera return the door to the camera and then use this little uh, knob at the um, 
on the door to close off or to make sure that the door is secure. And by the way, I, I actually forgot to mention this earlier, but you, w you would want to load the film into the camera at 24 frames per second. Otherwise, if you do it at 64 frames per second, you could end up running into issues with the, your film getting stuck in the camera. And of course, you don't want that happening. Alright, so once you've got the film loaded in the camera, just like I mentioned earlier, uh, your film count, your your footage counter will show that it starts at A. What you want to do is have it go from A until zero, and once it is at zero, you're basically ready to start shooting. And that part of the film will likely not be exposed, so it is it would be safe to shoot if it's not exposed at zero. Okay, so that is for loading the camera. Um, once again, it does take a lot of... It did take me a lot of practice to get it right. Alright, so for unloading the camera, the first, the first step you want to follow is disengaging the motor. I mentioned earlier that there's a certain reason why you would want to disengage the motor, and this is it. You want to just disengage the motor first, then you want to make sure that your camera is set to always running. Um, I really don't know how this whole thing works with unloading the camera and, and disengaging the motor and set it to always running, but it works. After you have the camera set to always running, of course with the motor disengaged, nothing will happen. Next what you want to do is get your crank and just insert it right here in your camera. Just um, insert it and then kind of move it around until it clicks into place. And then you want to uh, crank this up. You, you will have to do a lot of cranking um, if you end up using 100 feet of film. Uh, but you want to just keep on cranking it, keep on um, winding it back to the original spool until uh, your camera or the footage uh, meter or counter uh, returns back to A. And then what you can do from there is open the door to the camera and just take out that uh, spool of film. As you can see all the film has returned back to this spool. It's no longer on this receiving spool because we have just uh, wound up the film back to this original spool. And one thing I would recommend you do before even trying to take out um, uh, the spool is make sure that f feel around in the take up spool and make sure that you don't feel any more film in there. Also feel inside these loop formers to, uh, to see if there's any film still stuck in there. Um, if not, just you're ready to take out that uh, original film spool. Alright, so thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I understand this video was very long, um, but hopefully I covered everything and answered all your questions. And I'll see you guys in my next video.